Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video we will be talking about a very, very active pattern um, coming in the next week. So starting next week, the next five to six days look relatively calm across most of the United States um, compared to at least what could come. And you may think, oh, just a lot of rain and severe weather. No, there could be a lot of snow with these systems and not just for uh, very far locations, very, very far northern locations. This could bring snow to some unexpectedly uh, warm locations that are very warm right now, right? And, uh, you know, definitely surprise. Uh, the models have been trending toward this for this tour for the past uh, several days now and it's becoming more and more obvious so uh, before we get into this if you guys would like to support this channel if you like what you're seeing your returning viewer especially but haven't subscribed yet consider doing that consider liking the video and if you uh just are new watch the video and see for yourself if this is something you'd like okay let's get into this so first off notice at the radar that i've been uh paused at we have a bit of stuff going on, if, and if you think this is a lot of activity, well, get ready for some big March snowstorms, winter storms, uh, severe weather, a lot, all of that is coming. And, you know, that's usually what you see in the springtime, where you see volatile air masses, um, <clears throat> one from the south, warming uh, the, you know, the one, that, the one that stays through spring and summer, and then a receding one, the cold one, that still is very reluctant at times to release itself, and this year seems to be that case. Um, even though right now it is warm out, I will talk about it. Notice we do have a bit of showers uh, across uh, Iowa, snow showers, and mainly just rain showers. Light rain occurring across Arkansas, Mississippi. We do have, oh, sorry about that. Yeah. <clears throat> we do have some isolated uh, thunder showers with this. You can see across Louisiana, nothing severe, a uh, bit of heavy rain possible. And that pretty much is going to move through uh, the, you know, the Gulf and out into Florida where it could intensify and some locations, especially across the western shores of Florida, I'm sorry, eastern shores of Florida could end up picking up around an inch if not more. Notice we do have those snow showers across Iowa. Um, they will kind of dwindle, but they have been occurring for a bit. Notice that we do also have some lake effect that has started occurring across the um, upstate New York area at around 2 to 3 in, in the afternoon, 3 to 4 of their time. Notice that it has continued, right? And it's occurring pretty well. So a bit of snow for you guys there. And notice we have a lot of snow moving into the uh, Washington, the Northwest, Oregon, California. And we have some winter weather advisories for the elevated areas for some snow, two to five inches. Some locations in the Sierra Nevada could uh, see up to 11, especially further north you go. Not a huge winter storm, though. As you can see, it's just an advisory. Um, let's take a look at what the National Weather Service map looks like. Notice that right now we don't have much going on. Um, and you may be wondering, what's this red? Is that a blizzard warning? No, it's a red flag warning. And that basically is uh, a fire warning, right? So not that it's imminent, but it's possible that uh, it's, a you know, to be wary that it's dry. It's very, very warm, unseasonally warm from this time of the year. And, it's, you know, if a, a fire ignites with very strong winds, it could spread and you could see that's kind of what they resonate in these uh these warnings and you know this is a pretty large area if you were to look at it in terms of real estate uh or just just a amount of land right notice quite a bit of land uh, a bit of uh across southern texas is also under that anywhere else a bit of some special weather statements nothing really too significant notice right along the mississippi we have just bunch of river warnings, river flood warnings, flood advisories. Again, that will continue and probably get worse as we get uh, loads of rain coming in. Not for the next couple of days, though, so hopefully that could help. And a bit of those advisories going on. Okay, this map will look completely different next week, probably this time um, next week, right? So Friday, probably already starting Wednesday, Thursday. Let's take a look at this. So um, I just want to show you quickly that National Weather Service, additionally, Right, is uh, showing this much precip through 72 hours. This looks like a model, but it's actually their forecast put on like a model format. You can see this is in terms of rain and snow, right, combined. So this will fall in the form of snow up here. This will be rain. And again, you can see up to an inch, especially across the, the eastern shores right there as it intensifies and decent amounts for the coastal areas of the northwest. Let's take a glance at the GFS and let's begin this. So notice right now we have a very warm pattern across the plains. This will continue shifting in. Um, potentially records getting broken across the plains with this 70s, if not almost 80s across certain states. You may be thinking uh, a snowstorm, really? 
And it's 80 degrees here. Well, yeah. Weather changes, especially in the springtime when it's uh, not supposed to be this warm, right? Notice we do have a lot of chillier across the northeast, and that is pretty stubborn, stubborn, and will remain there for through most of the weekend. But eventually does start lifting out, especially with this uh, low pressure as it kind of drags a bit of that warm air with it. And notice, we start getting into a very warm pattern. Tuesday could be an absolutely very warm day for much of the U.S., including now the Mid-Atlantic, maybe not extreme northeast, but still uh, warm for their average, right? It, we're just talking about extremely warm versus maybe average, so still decent. And um, again, uh, very beautiful, right? This won't be really a cloudy day, rainy day, uh, maybe a bit snowy for, say, look at that, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, right? And into uh, Ontario, a bit of snow, quite a bit, actually, if you take a look at that, stands out. But with that system that's moving on to the northwest now, combined with a bit of extra precip uh, from another system, you can see this uh, uh, disrupts the beautiful days across the Midwest develops quickly some pretty heavy snow on the backside of this again these models this is just one model there's a lot of models showing very different things and they are constantly changing even on this system that is 120 hours out which is why again i'm not saying that oh there's snowstorms are gonna occur you know exactly here here and here i'm just saying an active pattern is coming a bit of a cool down as well and in march you know uh snowstorms are not a uncommon thing if this was April, maybe it would be more hard to see snow out of these snowstorms. It's March, early March, almost um, all of these systems will have a snowy side to them. Notice uh, that we see this go through Canada. At this point, very, very warm across the northeast, just south of this system. Very uh, decent amounts of snow across Minnesota, maybe just north of Minneapolis into South Dakota. You know, even very dry, snowless, you'll get some Duluth potentially. Again, this probably will fluctuate this track as this is 126 hours out and this is just one model. And look at that, it develops a cold front, right? Quite a bit of rain. Um, not good for those locations that have seen all that snow melt uh, and they're going to get rain. Though, honestly, we've had a very little amounts of rain. It's just the snow that's been melting. So... Uh, here in the Chicago area, we've been very lucky. Usually with warm weather, we see lots of rain, and this year it hasn't been that way, and the snow managed to melt. So notice it does kind of drag that cold front with the system forming in the southwest. It kind of absorbs that moisture. And what the GFS shows next is a bit alarming. Look at this. We start seeing snow across Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, and this spreads to the east. Well, this isn't anything unusual, to be honest with you. You may be looking at this after the warm pattern we've been having and say... This is completely unusual. It's happened be before, and many, many times before. And uh, you know, March is the month of probably one of the biggest, uh, one of the bigger uh, storms. You know, with uh, the the month with the bigger biggest storms of the year, I would say. Um, some people may argue that's November. I would say it's usually March, uh, as it's more consistent. And notice, look at that, just lots of snow for locations that will be baking in the 80s potentially tomorrow right and uh, that kind of dwindles brings a bit of snow a bit of rain to again under unfortunate areas across the mississippi southern mississippi valley and look at that a lot of rain not good news but look what happens here after that snowstorm passes away this is at this point saturday of march 13th again i just want to say if I'm not going over the dates, it's because there's just so little confidence going over the dates would not help you out at all. Um, it's just too far out. I'm just saying there's a potential. And, you know, if this snowstorm, look at that, will happen, we'll have to see. But another one develops. Look at that. Very strong winds. 985. Blizzard probably conditions on the backside of this into Illinois, Wisconsin. Comes quite a bit of snow, lots of rain and warm air on the backside of this. And look at that. We see very cold air move to the south. And the warm air gets suppressed to the south. And uh, look at that. Right there we have uh, another band of snow developing a bit further to the south into Oklahoma, Texas potentially again. This is what I meant by that some of these snowstorms could be occurring relatively far to the south. More south than you'd expect with the March system. Look at that, St. Louis, right, into Arkansas, and it eventually develops into a nor'easter, a massive one, bringing snow into Tennessee, Kentucky. Now, again, it would be extremely foolish if you were to look at this and say, um, you know, let's start talking about this. Uh, this is definitely going to happen. It's just a matter of where, no. Um, this will probably be gone by the next model run from the GFS, but notice that it's showing this, and it's not just the GFS that's doing this. Let me show you, let me tell you that much. And then look, another system develops, maybe more of a rainstorm at this point. Uh, but again, more precip for the rain and flooded areas with the snow, rain, whatever, maybe coming in the next 
few systems, which there could be quite a bit of, right? In terms of a total accumulated precip, you can see it does center kind of the Illinois, M Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, the Oklahoma area. And preferably a lot more precip could be falling up here as that's where they're trying to need to snow. But again, this is just one model. And if you're to take a look at the total snowfall going through 384, uh, you know, definitely a unique scenario with uh, the snow going pretty far to the south and let's take a look at the one that ran one uh 12 six hours before that one you can see this is today's model what it thought was going to happen six hours ago complete change right and in terms of total accumulated precip uh you can still see it centers the areas across the mississippi and really mo mostly east west of the mississippi with this model run so it's going to change and I want to show you the Canadian model what this one shows because this one what this model shows is uh, you saw that right there nothing short of boring. So notice right for this system it intensifies across Florida into Sunday and Monday really across Saturday and Sunday into Florida and the southeast this weekend we do see that warm air shove that cold air out of here and look okay so you saw you remember what the GFS did with that first system kind of dropped a narrow band of snow across South Dakota Montana. This is what the Canadian does. It doesn't really do that. It does bring in a lot of precip, but keeps it north, uh, keeps the snow further to the north across Canada, not really the U.S. And notice that it does drag that cold front down with a bit of cold air, which eventually gives birth with the help of another system from the southwest to another low pressure. And you can see this one does drop snow to Michigan. Toronto could get slammed by this into New York, the Northeast potentially. Look at that. And then look, this is what you saw at the very first image that I showed you. A beast formulates out of this. Then you can see it's several pieces coming together. We have very warm air, a southern system from the remnants of this cold front. Yeah, right? And we have a new system um, that is a separate one kind of combining with this wave. We have a giant phase uh, of uh, kind of a wave of moisture from the north and it just formulates this beast of a system further across the northern United States. So not as far to the south as what the other model GFS is showing. But again, this is just through the 15th. The GFS took us through the 21st. Total snowfall, obviously favoring more of the upper Midwest, which would be a better scenario. But look at that one right there. Decent amounts. The West seeing good amounts, including into the Southwest. Uh, you know, preferably a bit more would fall, but not bad. This is precip wise. Rain and snow. You can see Canadian keeping it a bit lighter. Let's take a look at the GFS parallel. So this is another model. There's our system across Florida. Moves through, right? Warm air pushes the cold air aside, and we start seeing our first system. Several bands. Shoots out several webs of snow across the northern plains lanes that into southern Canada and look at that this model GFS per, uh, version 16 favors what the GFS operational shows not what the Canadian shows and you can see that it does uh, uh, include quite a bit of snow into North Dakota Minnesota not Minneapolis or Duluth it keeps it on a rainy side but it does give you moisture and a bit of snow on the backside as well again track will probably change a little line of thunderstorms again develops a pretty nasty cold front which you can see the GFS parallel agrees pretty well with the operational one. It does start developing some light to moderate snow across the plains, quite a bit of rain. And look at that snow to the northeast. It's not done. We have a bit of more cold air than what we have now after these two first systems. And look at that. We start formulating another system with uh, a lot more snow on the north side of it. A lot of rain, strong precipitation rates. And that moves out. And as, as soon as you think that's over, we see another one developing with uh potentially again t-shirt rain and snow further to the north let's take a glance a quick glance at the european model this is a relatively good model some people say it's the best model i would say it might be but it's arguable at this point with the newer models that have kind of been produced right so very quiet nice warm weather for now especially across the central plains moving gradually towards the east over this weekend and look at that across the west constant turmoil with little showers little storms but towards uh, the midweek next week we start seeing that system develop you can see it sends a little bit of moisture out ahead of it on Tuesday and then towards Wednesday afternoon. Look at that rain developing, bit of snow, though it's favoring what the Canadian shows, the European. And you can see it does develop rain, not that much snow across the U.S. Lingers that cold front and it does do something with this. You can see the European kind of just uh, really throws it around for a while and then brings some snow across the northeast, right? A bit of chilly air at this point is present here. And again, if any of this moisture starts organizing to the south and west that could quickly ride up and bring a snowstorm you can see the european doesn't think that with this particular model run but we'll have to see as 
it is constantly changing and evolving. Okay, I do want to show you, because I showed you a lot of these systems, a lot of threat, right? I just want to show you what some models are showing. So let's take a glance at the model viewer. This is the European members, and the, there are 51 of these models. So a lot of them. And this is snowfall through the next 15 days. So it'll take us through March 20th. Notice, this is what the operational Euro thinks. Look at that. Not bad, right? A um, bit of snow across the plains into pretty far to the south and northeast. And uh, uh, yeah, that's the operational Euro. And as we take this forward, we go through the ensembles. Look at that. One shows something like this snow pretty far to the south, even across Kansas City. And then one like that, further north, but heavy snow nonetheless. And if you live across the plains and you see you're missing out on this, don't worry. There are plenty of models that show snow for your locations. This is one that kind of minimizes that snow threat, doesn't show as much. Look at that one. Almost like a twin path of very heavy snow, uh, potentially. Look at that one, favoring more of the northeast. And then... Uh, Pretty far to the south across the panhandle, the heaviest snow, uh, with the snow stretching further across Chicago uh, into Milwaukee, Detroit, potentially. Again, uh, just a very kind of just a rough sketch. And you can see some center it further to the north and more west to east, while some center the system is more kind of north, uh, south to north. Look at that. And nor'easter potentially across Virginia, Maryland, northeast. So again, uh, don't be surprised if you see a snowstorm in the next 15 days across your location, anywhere from the plains to the Midwest to the northeast, even as far south as North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Arkansas, Oklahoma. I wouldn't say the far south at this point. Um, and look at that beast of a system further to the north. This one's a bit further towards the west, the mountains, uh, a lot of scenarios. And some of them are pretty aggressive with over a foot to cross New York City with that one. And I'll just run this through just to show you the, the variance among these models. They are not agreeing, but what we are seeing is that they are agreeing with the, in the sense that they're showing a lot of snow in just in general. And the models are just starting to pick up on this pattern. They have been showing an active pattern, but not as snowy. And you can see this one, still a model that doesn't show as much snow. Decent amounts for a few locations, but not as much compared to something like this. Uh, this this looks like something out of you know January or February, not not March. But again, uh, active season uh, continues. You see this one favors the northern plains with some very heavy snow, not so much further to the south. Look at that. This one's a bit further into uh, Minnesota, right there, Wisconsin, the northeast, the south, right. I would say the only area that probably models aren't showing snow is across the extreme southeast. You know, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, but even the Mid Atlantic, uh, you know, the Middle East. Mid-East Coast, uh, North Carolina, Tennessee, many models are showing snow. So stay tuned. Very active, very exciting in my opinion, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.